What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss everything going on here in our country that you need to know about here on a daily basis. And you're not going to believe what is happening here with farmers in our country who are having to destroy their crops because of extreme drought and what is happening with food prices gas prices, and also natural gas prices. Part of this because of what is going on here in Russia, and I'll give you the details on that as well. And a lot of this is cause for concern on what is going to be happening with all of these prices going forward. So you could see here this major headline here on the front page of CNN. American farmers are killing their own crops and selling cows because of extreme drought. And a lot of these massive, massive farms don't have the money for irrigation over thousands and thousands of acres because it costs millions and millions of dollars. So um, this extreme drought is affecting a lot of farmers here in the United States right now. They're actually having crops that are not making it to maturity. They're physically just dying. And in fact, this comes as of last year. Check out this. This is from Scientific American. The Western mega drought was the worst in 1,200 years. An exceptionally dry 2021 pushed the 22-year drought to the top of the record books. And according to new research that was published, that this has not been this bad in 1,200 years. And uh, nearly three-quarters of U.S. farmers say this year's drought is hurting their harvest with significant crops and income loss, according to a new survey by the American Farm Bureau Federation. This is, so this is directly from the farmers, guys. A lobbying group that represents agricultural interests. This year's drought conditions are taking a harder toll than last year's, as 37% of farmers said they are plowing through and straight up killing existing crops that won't reach maturity because of dry conditions. So they're not just killing these crops because of a conspiracy theory or for you know some reason like that. It's because they're they're physically just not going to make it. And that's a jump over 24% according to la from last year. And I just showed you how bad last year's drought was. July was the third hottest on record for the U.S., ranked in the top 10 for every state in the West except for Montana, according to the National Centers for Environmental Information and the U.S. Department of Agriculture's weekly weather. And the AFBF estimates nearly 60% of the West, South, and Central Plains are experiencing severe drought or higher this year. This survey was conducted across 15 states from June 8th through July 20th uh, in regions such as Texas to North Dakota to California, which makes up nearly half of the country's agricultural production value. In California, a state with high fruit and nut tree crops, 50% of the farmers in the state said they had to remove trees and multi-year crops due to drought, the survey revealed which will affect future revenue as well and future crops. 33% of all U.S. farmers said they've had to do the same as well, nearly the double the number from last year. They're also having to sell off their herds. Farmers in Texas are being forced to sell off their cattle, which is unbelievable due to extreme drought. As water sources dry out and grass burns up, farmers in the Lone Star State reported the largest reduction in herd size, down 50%, followed by New Mexico at 
uh, and New Mexico and Oregon at 43% and 41% per, uh, 41% res respectively. Quote, we haven't had this kind of movement of cows to the market in a decade since 2011, which was our last really big drought. Access to water for livestock has been a key issue for farmers and ranchers this year, with 57% reporting local restrictions on water use compared to 50% of farmers last year. Key water sources in places like Lake Mead and Lake Powell, which are running below 30% of their full capacity, typically provide water to 5.5 million acres of land in seven states. On Tuesday, the federal government announced the Colorado River will operate a Tier 2 water shortage condition for the first time starting uh, in January. This means that Arizona, Nevada, and Mexico will have to further reduce their water usage from the Colorado River. This means that food prices will be higher. U.S. consumers can expect to spend more on certain food prices because of the drought, according to the report. Quote, for cattle and beef, once the market processes the excess animals sent to slaughter and has a smaller breeding herd to operate off of and prices increases, could be six months to well over a year. And for crops, it could be immediate upon harvest. For example, California grows 80% of the world's supply of almonds, limiting other places U.S. consumers can buy the popular nuts. And shifting where almonds can grow is not easy, as the crops need a specific climate and soil. This comes as grocery prices are already up 13% over the last year, the biggest increase since 1979. And now, imagine what's going to happen even more going forward. Many people are already struggling with the prices. So imagine if prices continue to go up even more, which is probably going to be the case. Now, the thing is, is this is going on all around the world. It's not just in the U.S. And the thing is, is that this is actually creating food shortages and massive price increases all around the world and in countries uh, like, you know, continents like Africa and countries all throughout Africa, they literally can't afford food and have food shortages. You know, in, in America, where we're uh, a lot more blessed than a lot of other nations in the world, um, we're not seeing food shortages all that much yet, but we're seeing food price increases. That's hurting a lot of people because about 60% of people already live paycheck to paycheck or are in debt significantly. But in other countries, they significantly have food shortages where they're struggling just to get food. And now with the food prices going up more and more and more all around the world, imagine the strain, the struggle, and the difficulty just to even get food that this is putting on more and more and more. This is going on all around the world, guys. Food prices are already at all-time highs and now are going even higher. And the war over in Ukraine and Russia just continues to go on and on and on. In fact, it shows no signs of stopping anytime soon. We'll get to some details here on that. And it's actually raising natural gas prices significantly. When we get closer, we're going into the winter months here soon. A lot of people use that to heat their homes. And that actually just hit an all-time high. We are seeing gasoline and diesel, you know, gasoline that you would put in your car, uh, come down for about 65 days in a row here now which is really good. You can see the national average prices here for the U.S. here, um, down about 65 days in a row now. 391 here um, for the country average. Diesel now down below $5, 499 and 391 for regular, which is really, really good to see that here. Um, a, a month ago, it was 449 so we're down about 60 cents here in a month, which is good, really good here.
Of course, if you're in California, different story, but still down a lot there as well. California just has higher prices because of tax and a different blend of gas that produces less pollution. Um, but you see we're down significantly from the high, the highest prices ever, which was not that far ago in June of 501 for regular and 581 for diesel. So down over a dollar here for uh, compared to regular. But the price of oil is creeping up here a little bit. So you can see here the price of oil creeping up a little bit. Brent crude almost back up to $100 a barrel. And natural gas creeping up here kind of significantly. Um, this is the highest natural gas has ever been. Um, a lot of people use this to heat their homes. And this is at $9.31. This is the highest it has ever been, I believe. Here is a chart. Here is a chart for the prices of natural gas. As you can see here, it is at... This is a uh, over the course of like the last couple months, last two, two, three months here. Um, you can see here it's at the highest it has been. And a lot of this is because of the uh, war between Russia and Ukraine. And this affects us here in the United States as well. Even if we don't buy a drop of natural gas from them, just like the price of gasoline affects us here as well, even if we don't buy a drop of gas from Russia, it's just traded on a global scale. And if you've been watching my channel here, you know this. Uh, here's why. How a Russian natural gas cutoff could weigh on European economies and the United States. We all know that the price of gas went up significantly once the war on uh, Ukraine and Russia started. And it's happening now significantly with natural gas as Russia has started to cut off natural gas to Europe. They've started the process. They haven't done it fully yet, but they're kind of using this as a little bit of blackmail. Uh, it's kind of a show of strength and kind of a, but Europe wants to do this anyways. Europe has already said they want to wean off gas from Russia. So it's kind of a game of chicken here. Um, Russia warns of winter pain as gas prices hit new records for natural gas. A slump in Russian gas exports makes Norway Germany's top supplier. And you can see here that German gas to last less than three months in Germany if Russia completely cuts off their supply. So they could literally have blackouts as they struggle to find sources of gas. And all of this is making the prices go significantly higher all across the world, including here in the US. Germany will struggle to even have enough natural gas to even get through just this one coming winter. Even if reserves are replenished in line with government targets, refilling their gas inventories to 95% full by November would only cover about two and a half months of heating and industrial and power demand if Russia cuts off supplies completely. According to Klaus Mueller, president of the Federal Network Agency, the country's energy regulator. Stockpiles are currently at 77% full, which is two weeks ahead of schedule as they try to stockpile up. But the problem really so much isn't the reserves. It's the, it's the amount they use on a weekly basis and the supply coming in every week. A lot of it, which comes from Russia, and if everybody wants to be energy uh, reliant, not on Russia, you know, Russia is like the, the the number two or number three largest gas and energy supplier in the world, and if nobody wants to use that supply of gas, 
you know, all these different types of gas, natural gas, oil, gasoline, diesel, you know, there's crude oil, WTI, all these different types. If nobody wants to use it, that's a significant problem. And even though gasoline and diesel are trending down right now, over the course of time, if that whole massive uh, Russia, con you know, country continent over there, if nobody wants to use that entire supply for decades to come, that's just going to continue to raise the price of gas, the price of diesel, the price of natural gas, the price of all those things higher and higher and higher. So even though we're seeing gas go down now, what do you think is going to happen here going forward with, with natural gas, diesel, all these different things? Because, I mean, just think about it. That's the, the world's number two or number three supply. It's a massive, massive piece of land, okay? And um, now all these different countries are struggling to find where are we going to get gas from? Where are we going to get oil from? And this is part of the reason, and, and this is a part of the reason why countries all around the world really need to i'm not one of those guys that it's like 100 percent. we need to go green we need to go green but especially because cars there's just millions of cars here in our country that says you can't go green with your cars you need gas for your cars but i do think you need to go with your power supply for the for the the grid and stuff you need to go like green with that type of stuff only because the government can do that and take the strain off the gasoline and the natural gas and those type of things where we need that stuff for like cars where we can't, we don't have any other choice there. Okay. The government can build things like nuclear power, which right now currently supplies about 20% of our entire grid's power right now and actually produces no emissions, okay? Also, solar and wind, which also wind was actually the number two supplier of our power for our country. Um, it kind of fluctuates. It goes back from like number two to number three and, you know, fluctuates a little bit there. And solar, which is becoming more and more efficient and cheaper, all these different things here. Um, but the problem here with things like coal and gas is they're very expensive only because you know, obviously we know the problem with gas here and the other problem with the shortage of gas because we can't get it from Russia. Even if we don't get it from Russia, it's creating this shortage of the pricing because now we're having to supply gas and natural gas to all these other countries like the entire continent of Europe. OK, um, and that's making the price of oil go up, 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 okay? Even if right now the price of gas is going down here for 60 days, what do you think is going to happen in the future for the next year, the next two years, the next three years, the next five years? If nobody wants to buy gas from Russia for the next decade or two because of that whole situation and, you know, they, they can't be trusted and Putin and the whole regime, right? It's going to only make the price of gas and natural gas and all that stuff go higher. So if the government's able to power our grid with stuff that's not, uh, you know, consumable, like the second you put it into an incinerator and you have stuff that's renewable, like, you know, you build a solar panel and it's making, you know, energy for decades to come. You build it once and it's just there building, you know, you know, making energy. Okay. A nuclear reactor, you build it once and it's making energy for the next 50, 100 years, right? You know, wind, you put up your wind turbine and it's making energy and you don't have nothing to do. You have very little maintenance, right? If you think about those type of things, they're very uh, energy efficient because of the fact that you don't have to do much with them. You think about coal and you think about gas. You're, you're constantly held hostage to the fact that gas prices are rising. The price of oil is rising, 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 rising. The price of the sun is not rising. In fact, solar panels have gone down, 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 down. Once you put, if, if you put a solar panel up on your house, you pay for it once and then you literally pay nothing. It's, it's done. You know, maybe 20, 30 years down the road, maybe you pay some type of maintenance or something along those lines. But it's like on a government scale, 
that's like a supplement. But again, the government can't rely on just solar. They can't rely on just wind. They can't rely on just nuclear. It's it's a it's a whole package deal because we still need gas. We still need coal because it's just like a it's every little bit. This is kind of how like a me as a realist we think. Uh, we still need gas. We still need energy. And in fact, inflation inflation reduction plan, which I'm not a total fan of. I think there could have been a lot more for a lot of Americans. The gas and oil companies are actually kind of fans of it because there's um, there's a lot in there for both the green sector and the gas sector. Uh, and that's part of the reason why Joe Manchin actually signed on for it, because it's actually an energy package in there as well. So let me know your thoughts here on this. But this whole drought and energy thing is really going to be a problem for us going forward. Uh, and gas prices as well, because even though gas prices are going down now, but natural gas is going up, going forward, this could be a, a, a harder trend to buck because if you just look at the trends, I think this could be a significant problem for the long run. And gas is going down now, but what do you think is going to happen for the for the long term? It's 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 a scary it's a scary trend. You can let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'll keep you up to date here with everything going on here in our country. Make sure to subscribe down below to our YouTube channel. Click the bell icon so you get notifications when we go live with new videos. And uh, don't forget to hit the like button to support our channel. All that is completely free to do so, and I will keep you up to date here. You can click this video here to see another video I did about significant food shortages and food prices. That's a really good video here as well. And here's a video I just did about millions of Americans that are getting checks here that you might not know about. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.